all right all right guys what's going on welcome back thanks for all the new subscribers really appreciate it. you guys are awesome keep commenting keep liking i'll keep the content coming uh this is a twofer i'm doing right here i'm shooting a video on this mtd snowblower carb clean and it's going to be the same thing with this john deere power washer this is a super nice power washer it's got the honda on it it's got the big heavy duty pump not the cheap junk that you get um with a lot of the other stuff that's the same thing our friend brought it over and uh it's just been sitting with gas and it won't start so when something like that nine times out of ten it's the carb i already drained the gas tank out and it looked terrible so you can tell this thing does not have very much run time on it at all i have no idea what a machine like this costs nowadays i'll be scared to ask but i know it ain't cheap that's for sure or isn't cheap so without further ado you can already see what i'm doing here i'm getting the intake off this thing you can hear my ultrasonic cleaner running in the background we're already working on this with this other machine same time these are going to be 10 mils now hopefully we got to be careful with this machine we don't want to rip any gaskets since we're just going to be doing a carb cleaning on this. Uh, oh, also you got a 10 mil hiding up here on the top. Bring the camera in. I'm trying to show you guys everything I do. So if you're at home or you're trying to learn this stuff, save yourself some money. Not have to wait at a shop for a week or two when they're busy to get your stuff running. Now on here, Coming off your valve cover like every motor, dump it into your intake. There's your vent for your crankcase. Now you're just gonna slide this cover back. I gotta check the controls on the other side. It's been a long time since I pulled one of these apart. You're gonna have to turn your fuel and your choke so you, in this direction. So your cover will slide right off. You're gonna tell this carb too. It's gonna be gummed up, you can smell it. If you guys could smell right now how bad this stuff smells. Okay. I gotta to try to work this gasket off without tearing it up because I know I don't have one and no, I don't wanna order one. Um, so let me just show you real quick. We're gonna get the governor out. Of course, this governor is seized up too from sitting. Boy, oh boy. This one's really seized up. Let me fight with that gasket first and then I'll show you guys. A lot of times with these gaskets, and yes I know some people are going to disagree, you could take a putty knife and you could just gently work it in. And when these machines don't have a lot of hours on them, as you'll see, the gasket will come right off. Now I know people are going to say, always replace that. Yes, that's true, but if we have a problem after we put this back together, I'll spray this thing down with carb clean around here and we'll see if the gasket's leaking. Usually they're all right. Like I said, we're just doing a carb clean on this. If it's a higher hour machine or it's an older machine, chances are you're gonna rip the gasket. But I gotta show you guys what I'm talking about on this governor. This governor, <clears throat> it's seized in the position it's in. You can see, I, I can't even, Get the butterfly to move we're gonna have to figure something out for right now let's get the fuel line off like every other fuel line you're just gonna take your clip move your clip up it's funny these Hondas use really small lines I don't know what size they are but let me get a flathead and you're going to kind of have to pry that fuel line up and out of there. There you go. She'll start to you just give her a little push on the end. And she'll start to come up for you. And I'll put it up here so it won't drain anything else. I'll, I'll get a little pan and make sure we get the residual out of the tank. Absolutely, because it's considered bad gas. So what we can do here, we're, we're lucky on this one since the butterfly is seized. I think we're going to be able to, yep, there's just enough room 
to be able to slide it off the studs. And what we'll do is we'll just rotate the carburetor like this to pull these out. Our governor linkage and our spring. Look, look in the throat of that carburetor right there. Hopefully you guys can see. That's why this is all bound up. Look, there's no throttle control at all on this. You can see I'm starting to get it to move. It's gotta sit in the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's get it over to the drawing table and get it apart. Everything on these car Honda carbs is usually 10 mil. Right here, this is for your fuel. You're on and off, there should be a little screen down in here. When you got something this gummed up, here you can see this gasket came off just by touching it. So that one's good, no rips, no nothing. That'll go right back on for them. We get this off. I'm sure it's corroded to hell. Not too bad, not too much sediment in there, I'm surprised. Now we'll get the float bowl off. <clears throat> oh boy. There we go. I should have probably took that off while it was on the machine. It'd be a little easier to crack loose. I have a feeling what you're about to see is a lot of bad stuff. Oh yeah. Tall tail sign when you take the, uh, the nut off the float bowl and looks like that. Yeah, you're in for a good one. And the smell is just terrible. Now that's a gummed up carb. <laughs> if we can save this, we'll be doing good. I... We're going to try it. These Hondas can be extremely finicky. Um, we're going to try to get the pin out for the needle. Let me uh, get my phone out and take some pictures from my buddy here so I can show them. Alright, we're going to use pliers to try to pull this pin out. There we go. What we did is we dropped the little piece here. That goes in here it's just a screen for the fuel flow into the machine there's a little rubber o-ring too that lays in there just like that I'll show you on reassembly okay now let's see if we can even get the float out of here okay we got lucky the float came out there's your needle right there this is all gonna have to be ultrasonic cleaned I'm going to leave the seat in. Looks like you can pull this one out. It's probably fragile. I'm not going to screw with it. Okay. Get your idle adjustment right here. Take the screw out. Right here. Pop your little idle circuit. Hmm. We got a little cover on this one. Gotta be careful, this thing is, it's gonna be fragile because it's been sitting a long time. I might have to get a different screwdriver. Just be gentle with it. Don't uh, go crazy with these things, you bust it. I might wind up putting this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Just to get everything loose. Oh, there it comes. Like I said, just be gentle, keep working at it. Don't tear up the plastic. That's plug solid. Should be a hole in the middle. Of course, there's nothing in the middle. It's block solid right down in here. And then your main jet right down here. You do have an air screw right here. Shouldn't have to screw with that. You can see the tip of the screw right there. I'll put my flathead in there and just, oh, wow, it came loose. Okay. A lot of times like that snowblower I'm working on, you'll see in the other video, this didn't come loose. I'm trying to soak it to get it to come loose in the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, you got to like tap a little bit. Let me go get some tools, I'll show you. These main jets can be a real bugger to get out. A lot of times I'll put a torch tip cleaner in there that fits. And it'll just fit, and I'll be able to wiggle it like that. You'll see, I had it out. 
Of course, because I'm doing it on a camera, it's not working good. And tap it a little bit. You see, it's right there, guys. These can be a bugger. I'm not going to lie to you. They're gummed up like this. There you go. Just tapping it on the top there. Now you got to get the other piece of it out. You see it down in the throat of the carburetor. Push it down. <laughs> so you can try to push it down without damaging it. Oh, this one's really stuck in there. I'm not even going to attempt to get that out right now. I'm just going to let this thing soak in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while. This one's going to soak for a while. All right, guys, we're going to sit. We're going to let both those carbs, I'm shooting two videos for you guys at once, uh, sit in there for a while. It's going to be a gamble. When, when they're this corroded up and stuff, there's no guarantee you're going to get these things running. All right, we're about to witness what an ultrasonic cleaner can do. Cause you guys seen how bad this carb was on this power washer. Well, here it is. That took about two hours. Now, I know some people are gonna say, Mr. SRX, you're taking the coating off that carb, that's no good. Well, let me tell you something. This carb was no good to begin with. So if we get it running, I've, I have done this a lot in the past and with the coating being off or whatever you want to say about the aluminum, this and that, I never had an issue. Um, obviously, I'm going to let, you know, whoever whoever's machine it is, at the end of the day, I always let them know what we did. And, you know, if they say, oh, I want a new carburetor on there instead, absolutely, we'll do that for you too. Um, I'm going to have to fish the rest of the stuff out. But here's the bowl. Let's get some paper towel. Let's wipe her out. I think uh, somebody just told Mr. SRX it's 5 o'clock somewhere, so I think we're getting ready for an adult beverage here soon. But, I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but you've seen what that bull looked like before we took it apart. Will this run? More than likely, yes. Will it cause problems in the future? That's something I can't answer. So, when I give it back to our friend, I'm going to let them know, you know, hey, if this thing acts up in the future, let's just go ahead and put a carb on it. But as you know, some of these Honda carbs, they're not the cheapest thing out there, that's for sure. So if we get it running and it lasts for them, perfect. So with that being said, and isn't that a difference, guys? Wow. Uh, look at Governor's Free now. So we got to make sure we get it clean the rest of the way out. It is sticking a little bit still. I got to figure out why. We want to make sure that does not stick and run wide open on him. Wind up blowing this thing up. So let's blow everything out really good. Clean everything off. At least see what we're working with here. I'm going to have to fish the other parts out like I already told you guys out of the ultrasonic cleaner. They fell down the bottom and that thing is extremely hot. So, but all right, let me get this all washed up. I'll show you the drill. I'm putting it back together. I mean, can you guys believe that's the same float that came out of this thing? It's pretty darn clean. Uh, we are going to vacuum test the needle on this too. I made my own little mistake here. One thing we didn't do is get the rest of the main jet out. We're going to have to push it out of here with a flathead. Somehow, some way, I'm going to have to get that out. So I'm going to have to work on it. I figured after being soaked, ah, I was right. It's starting to come out. Uh, a lot of times I'll put torch tip cleaners in there and try to fight and wiggle it out of there. Whatever you guys have to do, you have to get this out or else this job's never going to run. I guarantee you this main jet is plugged up. Matter of fact, I don't guarantee it, or I guarantee it. So let me... Sometimes you can tap them and get lucky. There's so much corrosion and junk in this carb, you're going to be fighting with it. Well, let me finish getting this out off camera. Uh, what I might have to do is take like a little pick, something like this, and get down in there and try to push it. Which might have did it. 
it might be finally starting to go for me there it goes just like that you guys seen it little pick some tapping oh yeah not in a thousand years would have this thing ran with this in there so oh, i gotta get that cleaned out i totally forgot i took my little spring off the needle i'm gonna get all this little crap out of here the stuff will flake off you have problems this one's a little different to get your spring back in your float in the front there's a little opening then you're gonna push it to the back make sure that spring is not hung up sideways like it is you're gonna have to kind of mess with it make sure that that spring is laying in there nice and level i might have to mess with it one more time oh i think i got it yep I got it. So you just want to make sure that's in there nice and level. It's got a little surface it sits on. And then we'll get on to vacuum testing this. And we still got to get that jet cleaned out. I got it back in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now I'll take compressed air. Blow everything out. I did run a Q-tip where my needle and seat go. Or where my needle goes in the seat. Blowing these orifices here. Blow it out really well. Look for any junk you might have missed. Or for your choke not working. It's working now. Hopefully our fuel shut off will be alright. If worse comes to worse, we'll take it apart, put a new O-ring in there. Okay, now I want to vacuum test this needle and I want to show you guys. This is your low idle circuit jet right here. Let me get the tool I use. I have some micro drill bits. I actually have a bunch of them. What I'll do is I'll take the smallest one I got usually and it'll fit right up through there and you'll be able to see. Now you probably can't see it on camera. It'll push all that crap out of that orifice in there. These are extremely small orifices, hard to clean. Now I'll take compressed air and blow it in there and we'll be all set. We're gonna pop our low idle circuit back in. You gotta push down on it. You'll feel it seat down. It has this little cup on top on these Hondas. And then we'll put our idle screw back in. like this I always like to bring these idle screws out till you see about the first thread pop right about there hopefully you can see I feel like I say that a million times in all my videos all right now what I want to do is I want to test the needle and seat with some vacuum so let me get my vacuum gauge your needle and seat will just lay down in or your needle and float will lay down there like that put your pin in Gotta get it to line up. I just noticed on this Honda, this is a Keenan carb. I bet you this thing's well over a hundred bucks. So we're gonna do our best to save it. All right, let me get my vacuum gauge. I should mention like an idiot, before we do that, we gotta put the um, fuel shut off back together. So you got this little O-ring here. Guys, I keep tons and tons of O-rings at the house. So if they're in bad shape, I always replace them. This one's good clean the screen off real good let me do that you'll see your screen just sets in like this I don't know if the o-ring goes above it or below it I believe the o-ring goes I believe it goes below it maybe no I think the o-ring goes above it guys I'm sorry so you put your plastic in like that yep then your o-ring like so then you're gonna take your 10 mil and you're gonna tighten this up nice and tight against that o-ring and we should be good for a vacuum test of course we're having issues with the needle and seat on this 
I did put a clamp and everything. When I put the fuel shut off on, it's holding. So what I did is I took my flathead and I very, very carefully started to pry up on the seat. We'll take the seat out. And we'll see if there's any gunk in here. So there very well could be. Or this rubber o-ring could be bad. So let me see what we can do and maybe we'll replace the o-ring. Well you guys could have guessed that there's gunk on the o-ring so we got to get this all cleaned up and we'll try again. I put a new o-ring. Now you got to push these to lock it down in there. Those two little tabs. Push it down. Let's keep our fingers crossed. That should hold some uh, vacuum for us. And maybe cooperate a little bit. This is a pretty dirty carb, so I don't know. When you work on something that's in that bad of condition and try to bring it back, it's always a crapshoot. Uh, we're leaking like crazy. So either we got to clean the rubber tip on the needle up or we got to change the o-ring. Probably clean the rubber tip on the needle. All right, got my vacuum gauge pumped up to five. What I did is I pulled the rubber needle out and I took a little bit of uh, carb clean and a paper towel and sprayed it. I cleaned the end of that rubber needle really well. Boom, we're on it. We got it fixed. So let's get it the rest of the way together. All right, our main jet is done swimming. We took a bath. Let's see how good it come out. Definitely a lot better guys. We can blow it out. We can get it cleaned up from here. Blowing it with compressed air. Like that. It's hard guys with gloves on. And if you want to double check your orifices, like see I got a blocked one right there. I gotta get just take a small torch tip cleaner or a small um, micro drill bit. That's got to be cleaned out. Let's get it cleaned out. Hopefully you guys can see the gunk on there. I'm pushing out of that hole. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to clean them all out. I just got a little uh, micro drill bit. You can see I'm pushing a lot of crap out of here. Definitely cause it not to run or run rough. Especially on these Hondas. They're usually jetted right on the money. They're, they run really fuel efficient. So the jetting is usually really close. Just make sure you get them all cleaned out. Then I'll take my torch tip cleaner and I'll find the one that fits best. These are files, so you got to be careful. You don't want to enlarge any of these holes. And I'll find one that fits tight down in there or decently tight. Wow, the end of this thing is still really gummed up. You're going to see in a minute when I get it cleaned out. Well, this jet's really bad. It's plugged solid in the end. I don't even know if you guys can see that. I'm going to have to take a drill bit or something. I'm hoping. There we go. Watch on camera. Look at all that stuff. There is no way this thing would ever ran. So, we'll keep working at it. We'll get it cleaned out really, really well. Just keep working it back and forth like that. You don't want to file the opening, like I said. And once we get it cleaned out, we'll put it back in. All right, now I spent probably a good 10 minutes getting everything out of the center of this and cleaning all these little holes out several, several times. Drop your main jet back in the middle of your carb, which I hope, I'm gonna try to push it down. I hope there's no uh, gunk left in there. Shouldn't be went in pretty good 
Now you're going to have your main jet. Make sure that's nice and cleaned out. I'm actually going to run a torch tip cleaner in there too. This has to be one of the worst carburetors. Usually if you were in a shop setting, uh, you would just sell the customer a new, a new carburetor. And most shops wouldn't even work on tearing into this like this. Unless it is a super expensive carburetor, then you might get a shop that will. I know where I work, there's no way. We didn't have the time. So sorry, I don't know if you guys see a lot of that on camera. Just don't go super tight with that jet, just get it in there. Put the float bolt o-ring on, which this one's in kind of bad shape. It's not ripped or anything, so as long as it seals, we're good. Like I said, this is a... Uh... I hope that camera's tilted enough for you guys. This should have been replaced. But, I have a feeling it's going to run just fine. So now we got to get our float bowl lined up where the drain goes on the side here. So, I'm going to let uh, my buddy know about draining it. See what I was saying about the end of all this crap on here? Got to get this cleaned off. Can't have that on there. It'll be breaking off and getting in your float. Or, not getting in your float, but getting in your fuel system sorry we'll clean this up we'll tighten the bull nut on let's put the card back on all right the one good thing i can say i'm not going to go over a lot of detail is this carburetor is super easy to get on and off here which is nice because when you're taking a gamble trying to get something running like this that you have no idea if this carburetor is ever going to run right you don't want to have a huge job taking it on and off and spending a lot of time Oop, before i put that on i put my fuel line on Sorry guys, I'm trying to talk and work here and doing everything at once. So I'll get the fuel line back on. That's a really nice power washer. I know I mentioned it earlier. I'd like to own one like this. I'm just too cheap. So we'll get our little spring on for our governor. This one's going to be a little tricky. Give my heel stats. Right here, I'll take a little pair of these. And I'll grab onto that little bugger. And I'll work him right back to where he belongs. Just don't bend that spring, whatever you do. I know it can seem kind of hard not to. Okay, boom. Now you got your plate for your intake. Figure out which side goes to which. Looking at it right now. Uh, look at the intake here. go like this with it I guess well this thing is gummed up too man let me clean this off all right just a little bit of gunk in the corner of that rubber I just don't like it it's gonna want to suck right into the front of that carburetor what it is it's old fuel okay that should be good pop around like this like I said always pay attention to your holes in your carburetor, boom. Get the uh, intake on here. This has that one where you gotta have the fuel shut off and the choke move forward. Just like so. Make sure back here, show you your breather right here. Boom, bolt here, the two bolts here. Put your air filter back on, let's see if it runs. Another thing I want to mention, check your metal gas tanks on these when they've been sitting a long time. If they're gummed up, you're going to have to clean them out. Not gummed up, but rusted up, you're going to have to clean them out. Alright guys, so I filled up the tank and I went to go do my test fire. Or I was going to hook it up to the hose and everything. 
and I opened up my bull drain because I noticed I didn't get all the fuel out of the tank and I the, it was old fuel in there so I knew it would not fire off that apparently I've never seen this before but the tanks clogged nothing's coming out so I'll let you know what I find okay remember what I said earlier in the video about the metal tanks well here's your metal screen and it's block solid so we're gonna have to come up with something to get it cleaned out I took carb clean and was able to get this all cleaned out. I can't believe it. I've never seen nothing like that before. Um, and then I used a little bit of silicone, silicone grease. Just keep the O-ring in place so I get this back on the gas tank. Because I got the tank half full. And I don't feel like emptying it again. I spent four hours out here on two machines. Usually a carb job takes you a half hour. But these were severely gummed up. So let me get her back on and let's see if she runs. Alright guys, it's dark out. I don't know if you can see, but let's see if we can't get her to run. guys i'm gonna wrap the video up in the garage now you can see me i tried to wrap it up outside but it's just so dark um i had problems with the needle and seat in there again that piece that i put the o-ring in the seat how that whole plastic piece comes out of that carb the o-ring i put in there when i put it in didn't sit all the way flush what i did is i took a flat piece of metal across the top of that plastic and was able to take both my hands and seat it all the way down so what was happening is when i put it together it was flooding out the intake with fuel and drain, just fuel running everywhere. So I didn't get it on video, but I took it back apart, seated that down in there, and boom. So what it did is it, it was flooded out. So those Hondas are real finicky like that, but I'll give it another try in the morning. I'm going to have the guy bring the wand over for it so I can make sure that under load it's running good and everything. But that should be the ticket, guys. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, and we're back with a lot more.